Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books, my name is Drake. The 90s were all about making random changes and marketing stunts for the sole purpose of selling more toys and more issues. And what better way to get both of them in one fell swoop than for random gratuitous costume changes? Not all of them worked. In fact, most of them didn't. So today I want to take a look at some of my least favorite costumes from the 90s and maybe give you guys a little bit of trivia while I'm at it. The death and return of Superman was a huge marketing stunt. After all, this was the storyline that essentially broke the concept of death in mainstream superhero comics. As big as the death of Superman was made out to be, his return had to be equally huge, and DC needed a new costume to help shake up the status quo and show fans that things had changed. Oh, things were different alright, because Supes was back! With a mullet! and in a black costume, a boring black onesie with a silver S. Look, making fun of the mullet is easy. The hairstyle as a whole was definitely a product of its time, but it's still pretty goofy to see it on Superman, especially considering that he kept it even after returning to his iconic costume. With just one glance, you can easily tell which era of Superman comics that you're looking at. However, this wasn't the only change in appearance that Superman would get in the 90s. See, they already killed Superman and brought him back to life, so where do you go from there? Well, how about turning him into pure energy, getting rid of his powers, and giving him a whole new power set so he has to learn how to be a superhero from the ground up all over again? This was the era of Superman Blue, and since things would just phase through his new energy form, Supes had to wear this containment suit that held him together and helped channel his new lightning-based powers. I'm not going to lie, it's pretty dumb especially when he was split into two entities giving birth to Superman Red. But hey, at least all of this was a really nice homage to a classic Superman story and led to that one episode of Justice League Action. In the famous storyline Fatal Attractions, Magneto stripped away the adamantium that laced Wolverine's skeleton, and because of that, Logan got his badass bone claws. But he also started regressing into a feral state. Except, it wasn't a regression, but rather an intense mutation. You see, to help explain this nonsense, Professor X noted that the adamantium bonded to a skeleton is what prevented Logan's feral state from taking hold before, not even accounting for his life before the Weapon X project, which... Okay, fine, whatever. What puts this stupid plot point on this list was when a future character came back in time and tried rebonding the adamantium, which failed, and accelerated the feral process. Now, Logan was a gurgling monster without a nose and adopted this new bandana look. While Wolverine did regain a lot of his humanity over the next few issues, the bandana and the no-nose over mutation look vanished for no given reason at all. I mean, sure, Logan kept the bone claws until he eventually got his adamantium back fully, but this completely nonsensical 90s nuisance faded away entirely, and that's honestly fine by me. The original Nightwing disco suit costume is ridiculous, and I kind of love it. I mean, it's supposed to be reminiscent of his time in the circus, and it works really well. The costume was updated in the new Titans number 88 in 1992, but it doesn't really work for me. In my opinion, you lose some of the charm of the original suit in trying to modernize it, and Nightwing goes from a character that stands out to just a generic 90s superhero that looks like he was created by some indie comic publisher as their pastiche of Batman. This redesign wouldn't last for long, since a couple of years later, Dick Grayson temporarily filled in as Batman after the events of Nightfall, and he was donning the cape and cowl at the time. As soon as Bruce returned and became Batman again, Nightwing got his first solo run in 1995, ditching his costume in the very first issue after claiming to quit being a superhero. Just one issue later, he returns to the role of Nightwing, but of course, doesn't have a costume anymore. That's when we got his now iconic costume, albeit with that obnoxiously long ponytail. This obviously was the best move since he's been in that outfit ever since, with the only hiccup being that god-awful red, which the less said, the better. But hey, speaking of Batman replacements, you know who took over before Dick Grayson stepped in? Jean-Paul Valley, aka Azrael. Lovingly referred to as Azbats, this design made its first appearance in Detective Comics number 667 in 1993, and is everything that you'd expect in a 90s costume. It's overly designed, overly edgy both literally and figuratively, covered in spikes, and serves as a major departure from the status quo just for the sake of it. 
I personally do like the gold motifs on this bat suit as it pays tribute to Jean Paul's Azrael armor, and the wrist mounted grappling hook is pretty neat in a Spider Man way, but this looks more like the Batman equivalent of one of those special action figure exclusive outfits from something like the Ninja Turtles. Whenever you get a list like this one, the Glamrock Thor design almost always shows up, and for good reason. I mean, come on. The crop top, spikes, gambit style head sock, shoulder pads, straps upon straps upon straps, and a random chain on Mjolnir for absolutely no reason makes Thor look like some random player character from an MMO. However, a lot of people don't talk about how this design basically didn't exist. Yeah, Thor was going shirtless for a pretty decent while, but on the last issue of his series, he adopted this new look for no reason whatsoever. Sure, he wore this outfit when making some crossover appearances, including the DC vs. Marvel event, but I seriously can't crap on this design too much, because while it was bland and unneeded, it's not like it had much of an impact on the story. Besides, isn't a complete costume overhaul done at random that leaves just as quickly as it came not the most 90s comic thing imaginable? Yes. Yes it is. Wonder Woman has had some weird costume changes over the years, from her mod era to the jacket and jeans that I had made an entire video about, but in the 90s things got a little weird. So Queen Hippolyta got a vision that Wonder Woman was going to die, and was pretty pissed off that Diana was choosing to work at a taco shop instead of dedicating her time towards spreading peace and love, so she forced Diana to compete in a contest to earn the title of Wonder Woman back, and she lost. The mantle of Wonder Woman was given to a new character named Artemis, which forced Diana to adopt this new biker look of shorts, a bra, and a leather jacket. This looks more like some evil alternate universe Wonder Woman more than anything else, and was a huge departure. Hell, this costume change was so drastic that when Marvel and DC decided to smash their characters together in Amalgam Comics, Diana's costume was pretty much the same, with few changes. Anyway, Queen Apollo's vision came true, and a Wonder Woman did die alright. But since she was the one with the mantle now, it was Artemis. With her dying words, Artemis gave the title and costume back to Diana, making this change last for only eight issues in total. So the tagline of Artemis is the new Wonder Woman forever isn't that accurate. Guy Gardner is one of my favorite Green Lanterns, and although he started his solo career in the 90s with Sinestro's yellow ring and a leather jacket, DC was basically trying to kill off the entire concept of ring slingers so that they could focus on Kyle Rayner. Enter the Water of the Warriors a cocktail that activated long dormant alien DNA inside of Guy's body that allowed him to turn into this and gave him the ability to shapeshift. It was not a good look and lasted for about 10 years before Guy was brought back into the Green Lantern Corps when DC decided to care about them again with Green Lantern Rebirth. This change lasted the longest out of any of the terrible designs featured on this list, which speaks volumes about how confident DC was in their decision. When it was decided that Guy would go back to being a Green Lantern, the change happened quickly, dramatically, and basically wasn't mentioned ever again. If anything, this is a testament to how wrong DC was in the first place. And honestly, I'm fine with this concept never making a return in the modern era of Green Lantern. The entirety of the Marvel Comics multiverse spun out of the Fantastic Four series, and Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, was the original Supermom. She didn't need a costume change. At all. But despite this, Sue's new outfit that debuted in the Fantastic Four number 371 in 1992 is arguably one of the worst superhero costume redesigns of all time. It's not so much a new design, but rather more of just taking a pair of scissors to the old one. The lack of sleeves, exposed legs and back, belly window, and that god-awful four-shaped boob window were bad enough, but that weird-ass collar and the random arm and leg bands just make the whole thing bafflingly stupid and way out of character. You see, that's the biggest issue. Sue Storm got a drastic personality shift along with the costume, acting colder and more irritable. Sure, it was explained away, but it still led to some stupid scenes, like Sue making people's clothes disappear whenever they criticized her new wardrobe. Oh, and as a quick aside, as Sue's outfit got smaller and smaller, the Thing got a new costume a few issues later that moved away from his classic trunks to a onesie and a helmet. A couple of years later, the Invisible Woman's outfit got a reworking that makes this design work a little bit better and look pretty great in the process, actually. But the boob window version will live on in infamy, mostly as joke and reference material. Now, if you've been around my channel, then you know that Booster Gold is my all-time favorite superhero. And I hate to admit, 
that even he succumbed to the pointless design changes of the 90s. But what's worse than that is that it was the dumbest trope of the era, power armor. Characters in the 90s were constantly just getting random suits of armor, even if it was just for like one issue. And considering the booster suit already augments his strength and defensive capabilities, this bulky armor wasn't needed in the slightest, and it completely ruins his sleek and easily marketable aesthetic. There's not really much to talk about here since the armor is too bland to even stand out, but it hits me on such a personal level that even my favorite boy had the cliche 90s hiccups. Eh, at least it's better than that bland outfit the booster got in the New 52 that kind of made him look like a City of Heroes NPC. Wow, that might be like the most oddly specific insult that I have ever given on this channel. Now don't get me wrong, there are way more terrible 90s costumes out there, and I do want to make a follow-up video about them sometime in the future. So the ones you want me to touch on that I didn't talk about today, go ahead and leave them down there in the comments below. I also want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, an online community with over 17 thousand courses from experts in a variety of courses, including Photoshop and video editing, both of which are courses that I personally took on the program and used in this video to help get it out a little bit faster. For only $10 a month, you can get unlimited access to all of their courses. I also have a hobby of designing tabletop games, and I want to take these just boring uh, text documents that I had made and spice up a little bit for whenever I do my official pitches for actually getting the game published. Now, not only do I personally use and love the service, but they actually hooked me up with a promo code of skl.sh slash comic drake, which is also down there in the description below, which will give the first 500 people that sign up two months of service for only 99 cents. So if you want to support the show and get a little something for yourself, please, 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 consider them and take a look for yourself. But hey, if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? In fact, we have an entire playlist dedicated to crazy 90s nonsense, so you might want to take a look at that if you like this. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.